situation in, in, in Greece, the situation is much worse because the economic crisis is much deeper. If it's deep in Spain, it's, it's even much deeper in, uh, in Greece. It's not only that Greece has not come out of the recession yet, is that the, the economy is, is likely to fall more this year than it fell uh, last year. And uh, I can't remember the exact figure, but they just revised the figure of, uh, of economic uh, the forecast, economic forecast for Greece this year. I think they're saying that it's going to fall by 4.1%. But who can be surprised about this? When, uh, one year ago, when uh, the European Union bailed out uh, Greece, it wa wasn't really a bailout of uh, Greece, as we explain in, in a minute. But anyway, they, they gave they gave Greece or the Greek government all that uh, money. There, there were a number of conditionalities. Massive cuts in uh, retirement, uh, in pen the pension system, cuts in the pay of uh, workers in the public sector, reduction of number of workers in the public sector, reduction of services, massive cuts in public spending. And now uh, you have an economy that's in recession. And then you withdraw all this massive amount of money from the economy. The workers don't have the same amount, have less money to pay for, to buy uh, goods. Uh, some of them lost their jobs and uh, the government is not spending any money. What's the result going to be? The economy is going to go even further down. The hope uh, was that by massively cutting uh, the production costs in uh, Greece, i.e. lowering uh, workers' wages and, and so on, then Greece could export its products cheaper to other countries and maybe start uh, recovering. But the reports from the first quarter of this year say that even exports have gone down in relation to the previous uh, year. The situation is one where basically Greece cannot and will not pay this uh, debt. I think, it, I think it now represents 160% of uh, GDP. But the problem is uh, who owns uh, this uh, debt? Who are the creditors? On the one hand, <coughs> on the one hand is the Greek uh, banks, but also a large amount of this is, is uh, owned by French mainly and also German uh, banks. And what they really worried is that if Greece says we're not going to pay these uh, debts, then this will cause serious problems for French and uh, German uh, banks. But not only the problems it will cause immediately as a direct result, but also because of the domino effect. Because if the Greeks say we're not going to pay our debts, then who's to say that the Irish are not going to say we're not going to pay our debts, and the Portuguese are going to say we're not going to pay our debts, and, uh, and then the ball becomes uh, bigger and bigger. So the so-called uh, Troika, which is composed of the European Central Bank, the European uh, Commission and, uh, and, uh, and who else? And the IMF, they don't want to let the Greeks even have a haircut, which means that, uh, not a haircut, which means that instead of paying the debts uh, now, they're going to have some uh, longer period and better conditions for paying the debts. Uh, some, some of the banks uh, that owe this money, they they quite uh, keen on, on this uh, haircut situation, the restructuring or rescheduling of the debt. And in fact, The Economist, main uh, bourgeois newspaper, is in favor of that. They've been saying that for many months. Because what they're thinking is, it's better to get some money than to get no money at all, which is the real situation. But this is not just an economic question, no, as, as we can see. It is also a political uh, question. We already see in Germany, there's a lot of uh, problems with all these uh, bailouts. Because people are starting to say, why should we bail out, uh, bail out uh, Greece? And if this these countries are in problems, well, uh, let them sort themselves uh, their problems. What is becoming uh, clearer, <laughs> also for the German uh, ordinary working people, is that in reality all this is, no, not because of Greece, but it's because of German uh, banks that all this, uh, that what they're bailing out is German banks. So the whole process of the working out of the crisis, the, eco the economic recession, uh, through the financial system and uh, through the government debt and so on, is now becoming clear uh, and apparent, transparent to the eyes of millions of people, not only in the countries that are more affected, Greece, Spain, Portugal, uh, Ireland and so on, but also in the countries that are not so affected by, by it, not so directly affected. And the process is like this, there's an economic boom which has a strong component of speculation, massive expansion of uh, credit, uh, lowering, lowering of uh, interest uh, rates uh, to minimum uh, levels. So for, for many years, for maybe two decades, the, the capitalists were worried about the recession 
being very serious recession with serious political and, econ and social uh, implications and they used all the methods possible to prevent that uh, recession. The recession uh, hits about three years uh, ago. It first uh, hits the banks and uh, when they uh, finally decided to go to Syntagma Square, they organized a trade union demonstration, a few thousand people, they went to Syntagma Square. The banks that have uh, lent all this money, uh, open doors, you want some money, take some more. And now uh, the, the taxpayers, ordinary working people, uh, uh, ask to pay so that the banks are saved. This was two years ago. In Britain, for instance, effectively three out of the five main uh, banks are being uh, nationalized. Politicians, right-wing and left-wing politicians, they say, well, this is necessary so that the whole economy doesn't go down and uh, well we have to have some austerity but this will not last for very long and then we'll come out of this. The following step is that because we saved the banks we now accumulated all this uh, public uh, debt. The government has no money for pensions, for education, for health care and therefore we need more austerity. People start to think, look, we, 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 this crisis is not of our making. This crisis was caused, this is not, not not really the case, but this is the public perception is the crisis was caused by some uh, reckless uh, bankers. We now paid for the bankers and uh, now we are asked to pay again. And they made a speech, the content of which can be summarized in, in Greece particularly. One year ago they already said, look, we must implement this massive austerity package, but at the end of one year the government will be able to start paying its debt back and the situation will be improved. There will be economic growth, on the basis of economic growth we can uh, again pay for all the social uh, welfare measures. Saying you feel betrayed because you voted, you voted for PASOK of the new democracy and they carrying out uh, cuts. One year later, uh, politicians turn to the people and say, well, listen, the situation is even worse, worse than it was one year ago. And now in Greece, you also had the situation of a block in the political uh, front and in the trade union uh, front. In the political front, the people had kicked out the new democracy right-wing uh, government and elected uh, PASOK. But that, but that didn't change anything. The PASOK is the one that's carrying out all these uh, policies. Yeah. And in the trade union front, yes, the, the trade unions have called, I think it's 11 general strikes in, uh, in a year and a half. But most workers are already saying, well, what's the point? You call, one, you call one general strike, this is a serious militant uh, general strike. But it's clear that that's not enough to stop the, the government, uh, the cuts, the austerity program. So what do you do? You call another general strike, yeah. then another one, and until then another one, until you've called 11. And people don't care about general strikes anymore. They don't see that this uh, fulfills any concrete uh, purpose of uh, stopping the government. They, they've tried it 11 times, it hasn't worked, why should we keep uh, doing the same thing? And that's also where this movement uh, comes uh, from. Mm movement that has developed very quickly into a massive uh, movement. On Sunday, there were hundreds of thousands, su last Sunday, there were hundreds of thousands in the streets of uh, Athens and, uh, and similar na and, and others in, uh, in other towns and cities around the country. I mean, the official uh, newspapers, in uh, the official media in, uh, in Greece talk about 200,000 uh, uh, people. Some people say half a million were in, in Athens alone. That's a lot of people, five, half a million uh, people, or even if it was only 300, 400,000. And there is this very strong uh, feeling in, uh, in Greece, as, as there was in Spain, but much stronger in uh, Greece, that we, we are asked to pay for all this, this massive austerity package. We don't have a say, and there's an unelected uh, troika in uh, somewhere, in Brussels or in Frankfurt or, or in uh, Washington, that decides about uh, the sell-off of all of the public uh, property in Greece, 50 billion uh, euro worth of uh, privatizations. We can't even say uh, anything. There were elections in uh, Portugal on uh, Sunday, but it doesn't really matter who you elect, because the austerity package has already been signed with the European uh, Commission uh, the week before the elections take place. I think it's 78 billion euros worth of uh, cuts. This massive austerity package has been, has been agreed and signed before the elections take place. What's, what's the point of the elections? There's no point. There's no point. Whoever, whatever party you elect, the, the, the austerity package and policy will be the same. Normal times, bourgeois democracy at least has the appearance of being uh, democratic. You, you're supposed to have a choice. But what's increasingly clear for, for hundreds of thousands, for millions of uh, people is that in reality there's two things. One, 
that, that uh, at the end of the day is bankers, unelected bankers and capitalists who decide over the important questions, and that it doesn't matter what the all political parties are basically the same. In some cases, they are even in a coalition carrying out the same uh, policies. This is what they would like to get in Greece. It's not clear that they can uh, get it, because popular anger is so strong. And now think about uh, this for a minute. In, in Greece, there were half a million people in Syntagma Square last uh, weekend. There are now uh, people's, uh, assembly, people's Assembly is meeting every day in Syntagma Square with maybe five, ten thousand people discussing politics, discussing the next steps of the movement and uh, so on. They are creating uh, People's Assemblies in the neighborhoods. And then sometime at the end of this month or beginning of next month, uh, the government has got, to, has got to put this austerity package to uh, Parliament. And the people have committed themselves that this will not be allowed to happen. That they will blockade, that they will physically blockade Parliament the day before, so that no one can get into Parliament to vote these uh, measures. What does this uh, remind you of? Uh, and the main slogan of all this is they should all go. This remind you of other than uh, Argentina in uh, 2000, 2000, 2001. It's not yet at that uh, level because no government has fallen, but just, uh, just wait. You could see, I mean, it's, uh, it's difficult to predict, but you could see a situation where a European bourgeois democratic uh, government is overthrown by the streets, no, no. by mass action of people in the streets. Mm -hmm. that, means, that means a lot of things. It's got revolutionary implications. For starters, it means that people don't think that they can wait until there's elections to change the government, that they have to change the government now, and that the way to do it is through revolutionary action in the streets. In reality, if you think about it, Greece is only the most advanced country in Europe, most advanced from the point of view of the severity of the economic crisis, from the point of view of the severity, therefore, of the political and social uh, crisis, but it's part of a chain. If you want, it's the weakest chain of European uh, capitalism. So uh, this has got uh, a lot of uh, implications, obviously. But my, la my last, very last point is this. If, uh, if Greece is not yet in a revolutionary situation, it's only because of the complete failure of all the left-wing uh, parties uh, and tendencies to, to give a, a channel to this uh, movement.